Come on to this short episode on CIE IGCSE History Revision Podcast on the League of Nations the issues that they dealt with in the 1920s. We're going to cover seven incidents that occurred in the 1920s and how the League dealt with them and what the issue was and then we're going to judge whether the League was successful in its action or not. So first of all, there's Vilna Crisis in, 19, in the 1920s um, and this was between Poland and Lithuania. Um, and there were two new states created in the treaties of the post war. You can look at them in previous videos. And Poland and Lithuania, um, were two states who were created and they had many different populations. And there was the capital of Lithuania, uh, which is Vilna. Well, it was Vilna, it's now known as Vilnius. And the main, uh, population of Vilna was actually Polish. And so in 1920, a private Polish army tried to take control of it, or took control of it. And so in response, the League ordered Poland to withdraw, um, but did not back this up with armed forces because France saw Poland as a potential ally. And Britain was very afraid to act alone. So the result of this conflict and the way the League reacted to it was Poland kept Vilna. And so this shows the League is very unsuccessful because they did not succeed in expelling Poland from Lithuania due to their own personal uh, views. They went against their own covenant, covenants because they were looking for their own individual interests, not the view, the view that the League as a whole was more important. So they didn't carry out the League's duty, but rather prioritised their own self-indulged interests, with France seeing Poland as a potential ally and Britain being scared to go alone. Then in 1921, there was the Upper Silesia crisis, such an issue, um, when both Germany and Poland claimed rights to the land and uh, to the land of Upper Silesia. And there's a big issue because both races lived there and it was highly valuable land. So it's very, very popular. There wasn't a case of self-determination. It was very much based on um, if both countries wanted it and in many ways had the same rights to it. So the League helped keep order during a plebiscite that was held. And this helped to make a judgment on the place that happened, what the judgment that happened. And they helped to ensure that barriers, etc., were put in place to avoid any dramas that would happen. And they maintained peace and helped restore trade networks, etc. So this is one of the first examples of the League actually being a success because they helped to enforce peace and they created a peaceful agreement between the two nations. And they managed to enforce the concept of self-determination which much of the League was based on. They didn't use any of their self-interest, they just enforced a plebiscite and let the area decide who it would go to. Now one of the most quoted famous victories for the League was in the Ireland Islands in 1921 which was between Sweden and Finland, when they both wanted control of the Ireland Islands. And this was the first big use of the Permanent Court of International Justice, which was set up through the League. And that acts as a midway man, a broker in the peace decisions between Finland and Sweden, and they decided to go with Finland. And this was resolved. This showed the League is very successful because they had halted a potential break in peace. They brokered peace successfully and then enforced this peace through their power of pushing Sweden into the corner where they would accept even if they didn't like the decision made. Then 1922 to 1933 there was the Austria-Hungary crisis when both Austria and Hungary faced bankruptcy due to their economic um, economy situation being unable to recover from war and the reparations that were set in the treaties um, such as treaties that were in place um, they couldn't really recover from it and so they would essentially crash their economy the treaties of Saint Germain and Trianon so they were in quite a tough situation because they were unable to recover from war so the League essentially took control of both the economical situations in the country and managed, managed the um, money and funds that they had for the countries on behalf of the countries to make sure that it's effective and worthwhile then they set up international loans to help them and ensure that the money was all equaled out correctly spent correctly and not prioritized on something that didn't actually matter this was a great show of the league's success in being able to help a country and be able to assist a country and recover slowly from the economic crisis that they faced then the other, a big incident that is often shown is the weaknesses between dealing with bigger powers and smaller powers. It's the Corfu incident in 1923. Because on the, 19, on the 27th of August 1923, an Italian general surveyor was killed by um, a Greek 
Greek, it wasn't a government, but an Italian person was killed by a Greek person in Italy. And this triggered, it made Mussolini furious. And he demanded a put in for compensation and the execution of the murderers from Greece. And when his demands weren't met, um, he invaded Corfu, where he got in, he invaded with Italy into Corfu. Um, so this placed many different issues for the League. So what they did, first of all, the League acted was place suggestions to Mussolini in Greece, um, but actually condemned Mussolini's actions, saying that he shouldn't be there. But they decided that Greece should pay compensation, um, but the compensation would be held by the League nations until the killers are found. So it wouldn't go directly to Mussolini, there would be an investigation into it, they would find the killers, they would sort it out. But this quite rapidly changed and changed to Greece having to pay pay the direct conversation, not through the League, and had to apologise officially. Now, this was a massive show of the League's um, inability to act against larger nations. It showed that Mussolini being able to undermine the system of the League of Nations and push for what he really wanted. And it showed the League of Nations is essentially corrupt because Mussolini got to the people he needed to get to and pushed them to do what he wanted. It was partially successful because it did prevent a war from breaking out. And it did get Mussolini out of core food. But at the end of the day, it just showed Mussolini getting what he wanted. He got the thing that he set out to get and it showed the League is so weak. Then in 1925, this was a great show in contrast to core food. Um, Greeks invaded Bulgaria in October after Greek soldiers were killed on the border with Bulgaria. And the League ordered Greece to leave and pay compensation. And due to the sheer pressure of these larger countries, the Great Big Powers pressuring Greece, they had to obey. And this showed the League is successful because it showed that they were stopping an aggressor, they were stopping any prevention of war. But it saw on an international scale as the League of Double Standard organisation, it showed the League as someone who could only deal with small disputes and not with big disputes, as Greece was quite unfairly treated. They felt unfairly treated because just two years earlier in Corfu, Mussolini had been able to get away with what he'd been planning to do. And so this was a show that the League had the inability to deal with the great powers compared to the small powers. And then the final incident we're going to look at is the Mosul incident in 1924, in which Iraq had disputes with Turkey over Mosul. Um, the League basically decided in favour of Iraq, which is actually a British uh, colony, uh, not colony as such, but British supported country, and against Turkey. And so this was basically successful. It just brought peace, it created peace, and settled the disputes. So these are all the main issues and disputes disputes and crisis you need to know about how the league dealt with and you can use it to show the successes and unsuccesses of the league so they're very key you can also look at things such as the washington agreement in 1921 um the Ruhr invasion um 1923 the Apollo treaty in 1922 which showed the league is quite weak because there was the, there to do with disarmament so the washington deal was a private deal between britain us and japan to work out their um Naval agreements in 1921. Uh, in France, there was the May Not Line in which France essentially started building up against Germany. They started protecting themselves against Germany, arming up next to Germany. And of course, they invaded the Ruhr when Job didn't pay reparations in 1923. And that was one of the things that triggered the hyperinflation in Germany. And then, of course, there was the Rapallo Treaty in 1922 between the USSR and Germany in which they received military supplies back and forth. And other agreements such as Kellogg Brand. Kellogg Briand Pact in 1928, uh, promising to renounce was an instrument of national policy, and so therefore pushing um, a pact that no one go to war. But at the end of the day, this wasn't a legal agreement, this was just an agreement that some countries made together. And so there's lots of different things you can look at to see the success of the League, and things such as the big agreements that were made out of the League, one and to do with the League. And so you've always got to look into these things about how they actually managed to do it, because you can look at the Commission to know that they were quite successful, but you look at these disputes and they know you weren't that successful. So go check down below for any links for other videos we've got.